Welcome back, everybody. Today we're doing a video that's a little different than what we typically do. It's a heavy, heavy, heavy information loaded video. Um, so a lot of information may not be as stimulating as some of the other videos we do with not as much shooting. But we have Dimitri, the guy that actually created the ACSS reticle, which is in many different optics, uh, a bunch of different primary arms optics like you guys have seen here, the scopes, uh, prism scopes, 4x14, 1x6s. You guys have seen tons of them here. And now, obviously, a real big piece of news for them is that uh, Trijicon has also adopted that reticle and put it in an ACOG. So huge news there, and it definitely shows the success of this reticle and why a lot of people, myself included, think it's a pretty good ballistic reticle. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to be going over the exact reticle that's in this ACOG here. Um, the ones, there's variants of the ACSS reticle from the HUD, um, which I really like, which is in this 4x14 to a little bit simpler versions, which are in like the prism scopes. Um, so we're going to go over this one, but the principles that apply to this one are going to be applied to the rest of them, sort of in how it works. But um, what happened was uh, I was using some new software that I've never used before to record uh, the conversation because Dimitri's out there on the West Coast, I'm here on the East Coast, and we were trying to record a conversation with the two of us, and we were actually on webcam so you could see both of us interacting. I forgot to record that part, but I did record the most important part, which is uh, the part where he's explaining the reticle and showing how everything works out and you can measure and range estimate and wind estimate and all that stuff. So all that stuff's coming up next, but that's why I'm going to let you know if you hear us talking about something that we're showing, that's why we're not showing it because I forgot to record that part. That's my bad, but the information contained here on out is really good information, so I think you guys are still going to enjoy it. Uh, we can start with the bullet draw compensation. Um, basically, you dial it in at 100 yards on the on the chevron tip and we chose a chevron tip because it doesn't obstruct the target and it gives you a very solid final zero you're not dialing in at 25 meters and theoretically being on at 300 uh, the further out that you dial in the the more the bullet drop compensation is true right so at 100 yards you dial in at the tip at 200 it ends up at the bottom of the chevron uh, 300 is the post, 400, 5, 6, 7, and all the way out to 8. And uh, we've cor correlated the auto range, uh, just like you find in a standard ACOG. Right. And we'll, we'll use these here as an example. And uh, we calibrated it to 18 inches instead of 19, because when you go 18, you end up shooting a hair short instead of a hair high. And... Uh, you always want to shoot a hair low because if you shoot over the person, you know, then the round is gone. To where if you shoot a hair low, you might not hit, say, the heart. You're going to hit just below it. So you you want to be short instead of high. Sure. Uh, and and for folks that don't know, uh, the reason uh, people go with 18 or 19 inches, uh, people who design these reticles, is because that's generally what's considered the width of a human torso if they're standing there looking at you. So that's where that number comes from. Sorry, Dimitri, just back at you. No, yeah, no problem. And um, as you can see, this fits the 400 yard mark. So if you picture a guy in the prone position, this would match, he would be at 400 yards and not at five. You can see five is too small, six is more, is smaller, and so on. So it allows you to, without a laser range finder, be able to range a person uh, to their exact location, just to the radical. Right. Um, the problem we ran into is uh, people don't always face you and don't always stand still to be ranged at a particular range. Yep. And uh, that's that's where this portion comes into play. Um, it's set to range 5 feet 10 inches. Okay. So you put the person's feet here and where their head ends up is how far away they are. And this is 400 yards, 500, 600. As you could tell, this guy is 600 yards away. Sure. And he could be running, he could be in whatever angle, and I, I, I could get an accurate range. Another thing that's crucial uh, in a lot of the studies is the number one reason shots were missed with wrong range estimation. So uh, where a sniper would normally mill out his target and then dial in the dope for that particular range, uh, you could have an error to where you're, you think he's at five and he's really at six and so on. Right. Um, if you look at between 500 and 600, the spacing between the crosshairs is so small to where you could have an error. Right. 
to where if you do vertical ranging, like right here, yep. you can tell he's at six and not at five. There's a big gap right there. Right. And even if you're looking at a person, guys, and are not five foot ten, just kind of found that as it would look on the reticle. And you can see that you're still going to be pretty close. You know, if you get if you just, just looking at the figures he's showing, you know, if you add an inch or two, it's not going to throw your estimation off very much. No, it doesn't. And um, But what's really neat about it, too, is <clears throat> let's say you're ranging the guy his full height. And all of a sudden, if you were to go in the prone position, right. instead of having to switch back over to this reticle, you're still there. This, this these uh, horizontal bars uh, range center mass at the same time, too. It's not just height. Yep. So you could tell this guy is 600 yards away. Um, so that, that's how the ranging works. And uh, you have to use both because if the guy's prone, then you end up on this one. Right. I even included where, let's say, the guy's behind a, a brush. So you get a guy kind of brush. You can't range him here because you don't know where the feet start. Right. So you end up here. You can tell he's at four. Yep. Um, another trick is to measure his center from his belt line up and see how it says 800. Yep. And divide by two he would end up at 400 because uh, uh, most people from their uh, belt line to the top of the head, they're 36 inches. So it's roughly half of five foot 10. Right. Um, another situation, you know, a lot of the stuff we, I developed it with the feedback from a lot of my friends that were overseas um, that saw a lot of action and th these are situations they ran into. Right. Uh, this is an insurgent, let's say, behind a window. Yep. Um, all you've seen is the head. Yep. You could tell he's not at 400 because if you imagine these to be his shoulders, he would look like, I don't know if you guys remember Beetlejuice. It just, he would have a tiny little head. Right. Small sh shoulders. And it's, here it's still a little, the shoulders are a little too big. And once you start hitting six, they look just right. And then seven, they're too small, and eight, it's way too small. You can tell the shoulder-to-head ratio is off right. to, to where here it matches. So that's another little trick you can do. Uh, and then we move into these wind dots right here. And these are very important because anybody that shoots beyond 300 meters knows that. And by the way, this is all set to yards. Uh, but anybody that shoots further out past 300, you're never going to hold exactly there's always some kind of wind uh 556 five, is very susceptible to drift i mean you, you could see here it's like a almost double the center mass right this these are calibrated for a five mile an hour wind hold so if you were to shoot let's say at 600 yards uh, with a 10 mile an hour wind you would you would double the hold you'd be aiming here right so this this dot at least gives you a reference to know how much to hold so at two and a half i know to be here at five, I'm here. Seven and a half, I'm here. Right. And, and, and ten, I'm here. To where without it, like the standard ACOG reticles, you know, it looks something like that. And it's like, you know, where do I hold? Yep. It, just, it, it became a big problem. Um, and, and people who watch my channel know a lot of times, even when I'm doing those accuracy tests, I talk about the wind holds you have to do even at 100. With 5.56, five, it's not too bad, but I've done some pistol caliber carbines, and it can play with those rounds. So definitely have to be aware of that. But go ahead. So, to take you guys through a shot really quick, so let's say we're going to shoot this. So, we got him ranged. He's at 600. Mm -hmm. And we got a five mile an hour wind uh, from left to right. So, it, the, the bullet's going to get pushed, pushed over to the right. So, you would actually hold here to shoot. And if the wind was the other way, then you'd be holding here to shoot. Exactly. Right. And, and so on. Um, and then the the technology behind it is it's the same it's a, it's a pre-milled uh, system it's just like you would take a, a your target in inches and divide it and multiply it by you know either a 27.778 or a 25.4 for meters or whatever and divide by mills covering target equals range so all that has been done and laser etched into the glass so you don't have to do any math you just simply you know use the reticle and, and that was my big concern. Uh, I'm sure Dimitri will tell you, uh, people who are used to the mill system, 
um, to actually know it and understand it. It's it's kind of like it's like crack. You're almost addicted to it. And when I was talking to him, trying to understand this reticle, um, that's exactly how I explained it. He explained it in the mills, and then it made total sense to me. So if you actually go, if you guys are those people who are familiar with it, you start breaking down the numbers, just like he said, based off the 18 inch or five foot ten, which is exactly the same thing that people who are trained in mills learn on. And you'll see that it really does all match up, which is which is wonderful for people who have analytical brains and things like that. So, um, just to interrupt you, sorry, but uh, keep going by all means. Oh, no problem. Um, so, and it, it, this is obviously caliber specific. It matches uh, 5.56, 308, and 5.45. And uh, basically, 5.56 and 5.45, uh, M855 M, M and 7 and 6, is, the trajectory is literally almost identical. Uh, at 800 yards, it's like a couple inches uh, off, and it's not going to matter at those ranges. I mean, you're talking about two minutes of angle air on the bullet itself to begin with. So you, you add wind and your heart rate and everything else. I mean, you're you're shooting a <clears throat> you're shooting a circle about yay big, if not bigger, at that range. Right. So, uh, and then with 308, what you want to do is is dial about one inch high at 100 yards and everything will line back up. Um, we provide the actual drop a minute of angle on each in each, each uh, mark on the website so you can actually look up your load. Uh, there's a couple of software that actually has the reticle in it and you can do an exact firing solution on it. Uh, and we also list different, uh, obviously a, a 16 inch barrel and a 20 inch barrel, you're gonna have different feet per second. So we list all the different feet per second by barrel length and your altitude. Uh, you know, we get a lot of people that say, well, you know, what Lotus is calibrated for? And it's like, well, you can calibrate it for a load, but as soon as you go 3,000 feet in elevation, all of a sudden it's different. Yep. So it's important that you calibrate it accordingly to your barrel length and the load you're using. And once you do that, it's, I mean, I don't know if you guys have seen some of the videos. I mean, we're, I'm not a pro shooter or anything like that, but I, I can reach out to eight and, Hit, hit a you know uh, 18 by 30 inch steel target you know fairly easy sure. um, and so you and then, you mentioned uh, 223 five, 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 excuse me 556 five, uh, 545 and 308 but mm -hmm. these, this reticle is made in other calibers as well correct um yeah not not this particular one not the ACOG one but uh we do have a 762 by 39 right. by 300 blackout we even have a 22 one which right. is it's my favorite i mean you know i, I like to plink around so that that's sure. but yeah we, we do offer it in different calibers we even have one that's a, a grid mill system which yeah. that's coming that allows you to match up pretty much any load um but right. I, I should got 300 win mag with that one but Awesome. I just wanted to point that out for these guys. The exact reticle we're talking about here, this exact one with these calibrations, is for, for the loads he talked about, but there are other ones available. I just wanted to point that Correct. out. Go ahead. Yeah. You go. And then we, we get into uh, leading the target, and it's funny, a lot of the military guys catch on to this thing right away because they're, you know, they've been in these situations to where including myself, most civilians, we shoot at a piece of paper or, or a target that's stationary, and that's kind of where where it ends. But uh, these right here are, are uh, a lead set for 8.6 miles an hour. It's how fast a person can sprint across a street holding a weapon. And, um, you know, most, most of the guys we talk to, they're shooting insurgents as they're running across the street in a, in a, in a sprint. You know, they're when they see lots of times guys will be overwatching a patrol and then all of a sudden insurgents are popping out of nowhere, running across streets and getting ready to attack that, that patrol and the sniper they expose themselves to the sniper. And, uh, a lot of the shots taken are, uh, are while, you know, while people are moving. So if you had a, a mover running across the street sprinting and you shot here, the time of flight would actually equal him hitting hitting at the chevron tip, uh, and it, it it's from zero to three hundred. Oddly enough, it lines up to where a hundred yards, three hundred yards. The the lead minute of angle is the same. Um, so this is eight point six, and um, this would be three point one. So uh, this is if a person would be walking, and you shot, he'd run into the bullet there. 
you know, sprinting you would shoot, you could run to the bullet there. And if you get like a half jog, like a combat jog, you'd halfway it and so on. But the hardest part of those shots is determining how fast the target is moving. I mean, that's right. And and uh, a lot of people out there might not know that that that's I don't know if other services do it this way, but I know personally the Army and Marine Corps both teach that eight point six. Um, so that way when you're dialing in your holds and stuff like that. So that's not just a random number for, for you guys that aren't familiar with this. That didn't just come from nowhere. That That's doctrine. That's that's how both the U.S. Army and the U.S. Marine Corps teach it um, in terms of uh, holdovers for, for movers. It's 8.6. It's standard across the board. So Correct. But, yeah, when, when, when I was designing this, I, I, you know, I've never been in the military or, you know, I, I've just been, a, I've done a lot of precision shooting, a lot of, you know, hunting and that kind of thing. But uh, a lot of my friends were, where I lived at the time was near uh, Tornine Palms and uh, Camp Pendleton and, and San Clemente or Oceanside. And uh, a lot of my friends that I shot with were in the military. And, and we got, I got connected through them with some of the sniper instructors over there and other guys that they served with and so on. So uh, I got to ask them the questions needed and get the answers from them what exactly they want in a reticle. Right. So I, I can't take all the credit for this thing. Obviously, our, our guys helped me design this. Yeah. And um, uh, when we actually looked at the uh, sniper instructor's data books, they went from uh, they went to three for walking, six for combat jog, and nine for full out sprint. And I think they did that just to make it easier to remember and, right. instead of the you know the eight point six, six point one, or three point one, what it actually is. But yeah. but yeah, but yeah, I mean <clears throat> because that because you have a complete system with no math. Uh, from ranging in, in any angle and uh, wind holds and even leads, it allows you to not need a data book. I mean, this doesn't replace a, a, the mill system by any means to a precision shot through a sniper team, it, but for an AR-15, an AR-10, that kind of thing, it's ideal. Yeah, no, I've, I've been really impressed with it too. Uh, people on the channel have seen uh, several of the optics I have with this reticle in it in use over, I guess, what, the past year and a half, say, since it's been out. Um, yeah. A couple of things I really like about it. Um, when you guys are looking at it, this uh, that red part, as you're looking at it there, that's actually the illuminated portion on most of the reticles. Um, so that's what's actually going to jump out at you. So if you're talking about, like, uh, shooting, it almost works like a red dot. Um, I talked about it during my home defense video that, you know, if, if – one of, the, one of the reticles that works well for home defense shooting etched reticle is this very one. I actually brought it up in that video. I think that we did that video about a year ago. And it really does. It draws your eye right to it immediately. And then, you know, if you're at distance, you have the time to go down and start using the other um, the other mark, marks in there. But it draws your eye right to it, just like uh, the horseshoe reticle that, that Fidgetcom's been using for a long time. So, um, Correct. And I do also like the Chevron tip instead of a dot. It definitely allows you to be more precise. No getting around. Yeah. Um, if you don't mind, Dimitri, I put out uh, before we did this about an hour ahead of time some questions on Facebook uh, that people might have about it. If you don't mind, we'll go through a couple of them. Sure. Okay. So you answered one of them, which was the uh, altitude one. So you already answered that. That was a big one that a bunch of people asked. Um, mm -hmm. And another one uh, was the, the 545 one versus 556. Again, we covered that. I'm looking through them right now. Sorry, um, a little bit. Yeah, Robski did a lot of the testing there, the AK Operators Union. Have you guys ever seen his uh, testing? But um, I have a 74 as well, and we shot it out to six in pretty windy conditions. And, you know, we, we were we were actually shocked how accurate 5.45 is and 762 by 39. I talk about the 545 all the time here on the channel. I have kind of a cult following for it. Here's here's one. And uh, you sort of addressed it, but this is a, a question I think a few people would have. And it's uh, a guy named Ryan asked, how much are the drop compensation compensators affected by uh, the different bullet weights that you might use? So if you could just go into that. Um, not a whole lot. Let's say you went to, a, oh, I don't know, a 75 grain Hornaday. Right. Like that. I, I like that ammo a lot. Um, I end up about a half inch high at 100 yards, half inch to a to an inch depending on um, again your, your elevation has to do with it but let's just say you let's just say you dialed in dead zero and you right. didn't go up a half 
uh, four would still line up, five would be about here, six would be about here, seven would be about there, and eight would be about there. Actually, no, eight comes up more because the bullet coefficient, it, it, it starts to, uh, the inertia of it and how aerodynamic it is, it, it doesn't actually drop as much further out. Right. A lot of people assume that a, a small, faster bullet will maintain its trajectory further out better than a heavier bullet and that's just not true i mean but uh even even if you screwed up and you didn't dial in exact you're still going to center mass i mean uh, even on a prone target you know you yep. end up hitting about there and uh, again the minute of angle and error from shooter and uh the bullet you know i guarantee anybody you know, even pro shooters, you're not going to shoot a tiny little group at 800. Hold, it's just not going to happen. The wind, uh, there, there are so many elements that come into the shot to where your, your field of fire ends up being about yay big or the cone of fire. Right. Yep. But yeah, if you if you do dial in a, as accordingly to the loads we recommend, you'll be back on. Right. Um, and that's that's one point I wanted to make too is that when you get the uh, the scopes in, regardless of which model you get, it does have. It has that guide, and like uh, Demetri was saying on on Primary Arms website, they also list all those all that data for the bullets and stuff like that. So it's all there, um, which I've used as well because uh, I actually had this scope here, which is this one here is the four by fourteen, I believe, um, with the ACSS reticle in there. Really good scope. You guys saw it on that three hundred eight video I did recently, and uh, I was using one hundred forty seven grainers in there, which it's not dialed, which it's not designed for, and. Uh, if you look at the guide online, it'll actually tell you, just like you were saying, where to zero for it and stuff like that with that load. So, um, just making a point about that. So it's definitely yeah. something we'll talk about. Um, let me see, if go through, see any other questions here. Ah, here's one. This, this and this one is good. Um, what are the different types of applications used for this reticle? And when I read that, what I was thinking of was the other reticles that you design, like for instance, the Hunter reticle, which is based on that. So. Um, yeah, be Orion. Mm -hmm. Take it however you want. Go ahead. Um, well, what's the applications for this particular one? Yep. Um, I guess self-defense, um, uh, CQB to medium range. It's actually two reticles in one. So this is zero to 300 would be your, your CQB type uh, fighting. Right. And, you know, people do move, so you will end up on these dots. I mean... And then the rest is medium range. Uh, we get a lot of guys that kind of pig with it because you can kind of just imagine 18 inches on about anything. Right. Uh, we get a lot of coyote hunters. So if you picture a, a, a coyote from uh, hip to hip to shoulder, they're at 18 inches for the average. I mean, you know, they can all vary. Sure. We could tell that this is about 500 yards and not six. Six is too big. I mean, too small, and so are the rest. Right. So I would know to shoot right, right about here. Um, but mainly, I mean, it's a self-defense reticle. Obviously, it's a battle reticle. It's, I think that's the key for it, is that it's a battle reticle. Um, yeah. It, and one thing that's nice, too, is you guys make all different uh, varying powers. Like we just showed, uh, I have this 4x14 here with this reticle. Mm -hmm. And then also the 1x6, you can get down even to really, really CQB. Because it's, it's very close to being a true one-power optic. And then, you know, the 2.5 fixed prisms. And uh, obviously we have the uh, the new ACOG as well with this reticle in there from Trigicon. So this is more power currently. So all oh, go ahead. You got the new American uh, defense mount, huh? I did. Yeah, I just noticed that. Cool. Yeah. yeah. It is the new one. It's with the two two clamps. I'll put a link below for those looking. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> um, that is what it is. So, but yeah, it comes in. I think the applications can be broad and also can be improved in terms of capabilities depending on the magnification you get, obviously. So I know you yeah. tell me arms is always coming out with new stuff, but this is what's out now. And I'm sure if I was to do this video next year, there'd be all kinds of new stuff. But you guys are always coming out with, uh, with different offerings for it. So, yeah, I mean, we, we constantly try to improve and, you know, we're, we're shooters, we're, we're gun nerds. We're not trying to, we're not a, you know, it, it's not just about selling scopes to us. I mean, right. So, Okay, uh, I think I covered most of the questions. Uh, a lot of them were redundant, and so those questions I read were were on there multiple times. Um, 
that's really all I got too. Do you have anything else you want to add on it? I think we pretty much hit the highlights. Yeah, I mean, other than you know, that's pretty much all the features to it. Um, you just gotta shoot it. One thing I like to stress on guys that do buy this uh, uh, reticle, whether you buy it in our budget optics or the ACOG, uh, what I've what I found out because I, I shoot this thing three four times a week. I mean, it's um, ranging targets at an unknown distance is more important than you just shooting at a at a target. Because in any kind of live situation, they present themselves at an unknown distance. Nobody pops up and tells you, hey, I'm at 500 or 6 or, or even half or whatever. Right. So I, I spend a lot of time um, putting up a steel target and driving back and jumping out of the Jeep and, you know, proning out and without a laser range finder using this reticle and uh, getting on target. And that's, you know, a lot of people will compare other reticles to it and it's, you know, unless you start drilling it and shooting it and understanding it and the people involved in, in making it, it they, you'll find that they'll lack something, whether it's the wind holds or if they're lacking the vertical ranging or there's no leads. They might have some of the features, but they don't have the complete package. Right. It's what you need in order to be effective. Um, we, don't, awesome. we hope to make a meter, a meter version of this at some point. So There you go. For me, people always get mad because I always quote think of the meters because <laughs> yeah. training and people are like, this is America. Stop it. But it's just happening. <laughs> I'll probably get one of those too. But um, definitely want to thank you for uh, taking some time out to explain this reticle today because I mean, I could do it and I have done it, but not as well as you can. Obviously, you're the man behind it. So I really appreciate that. And I think a lot of folks out there in the audience will gain a deeper appreciation than what I could have given them anyway. Yeah. I mean, if you guys ever have any questions, Dimitri at Primary Arms is my uh, email address. I'll, I'll be happy to explain whatever to it. Watch out. You just gave, <laughs> gave that out to 100,000 people. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so that's good. Um, awesome. But again, thanks again uh, for all the viewers out there. Thank you guys for watching. I, I really appreciate it. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And yeah, you just got the man's email if you have any questions. But uh, <laughs> I hope to see you guys in the next video.